Now, Hebrews 1 and verse 8 says, But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and forever, a scepter of your righteousness. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Then let's jump to verse 10. He says, And you, O Lord, in the beginning, talking about the Son, you, O Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hand. They will perish, but you will remain. And they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will, you will fold them up, and, and you are the same, and your years will not fail. So we look at Jesus in Hebrews 1 from verse 8, especially verse 10, reveals him as the word in eternity during creation, that he laid the foundations of the earth. He laid the foundations of the planets. He laid the foundations of everything, ladies and gentlemen. So he is the builder. He's the foundation of God. Now the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 19, I just want to recall that for you. He's the foundation of God. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. Then he says, let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So Jesus is the foundation of God. The foundation that laid everything. You know, a few people know that actually Jesus went into action to create the heavens and the earth. Well, I've just read your scripture in Hebrews 1 from verse number 10. He says that Jesus himself, in the beginning laid the foundations of the earth and of course the heavens according to psalms 33 and verse 6 is the spoken word the spoken word means the word of god who was manifested the word of god who came out and then he laid he stretched the heavens he stretched the the the, the planets he stretched the universe so he is the foundation and he is the builder the Bible says in Psalms 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builder labor in vain. Who is that Lord? But Jesus, the one that laid the foundations of the earth, according to Hebrews 1 and verse number 10. But I want to prophetically tell you and remind you. Jesus said in Matthew 16 from verse 18, He told Peter, Blessed are you, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, and he said, upon this rock, the revelation of Christ, I will build my church. So he's not just the builder of the heavens or the universe. He's the builder of the church. He's the builder of the saints. He's the builder of broken lives. He's the builder of broken reputation. He's the builder of broken identity. You know, today we have identity crisis. People don't know who they are in God. You know, when sin came, man swayed away from the image, the originality of God. But Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 18, I will build my, my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What prevailed in, in the garden of Eden? When Jesus built you, it cannot prevail anymore. Every sin cannot prevail anymore. Any brokenness, broken reputation, broken identity, broken marriage life, broken everything. When Jesus begin to handle your life, be rest assured that your life will never be the same again. No more shame, no more trouble, no more failure, no more, no more moral decadence. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus came to transform you. Religion reforms you, reforms your mind. But Jesus transforms your spirit for eternity. He reunites you with the Father. He adopts you into that conformity with the Father as his son Jesus is. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why he told Peter in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. On the revelation of Christ being the Son, I will build my church. Nothing will build you but you to get the revelation that you're a child of God. You are, you are, you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. The blood has washed you. You are bought not with silver and gold. My God, First Peter 1.18. You are not bought with perishable things like silver, gold. You are bought with the precious blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, without blemish. Ladies and gentlemen, the revelation, you are not poor, but in Christ you are rich. You are able to make money. You are capable of doing the best of your life, becoming the best in your life. In the name of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, 
So the foundation of the Lord is Jesus, 2 Timothy 2.19. The foundation of God is Christ. Hallelujah. And I want to fi finish by telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12, he says, there is no foundation, there is no other foundation but Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation for the church. There is no other foundation for a better life. There is no other foundation for sac true success and prosperity. He says, there is no other foundation but the foundation of Jesus Christ, on which he's called to build as an apostle. He's called to lead the church as an apostle. So the best and the, 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 the sure foundation which we are built on, which we can be built on, on which we can stand and know that we are standing uprightly with God, that foundation is not your self-righteousness. That foundation is Jesus himself. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all short, fallen short in, in imperfection. But when we stand on the foundation who is Jesus, and that's why I invite you to love Jesus. That's why I invite you to fall in love with Jesus. He is the foundation God gave you. He is the foundation when Peter was sinking. In Matthew 14, the Bible says, And Peter began to sink. Jesus came walking on water. So Peter says, Lord, if it is you, command me to walk on water. And Jesus said, Come. While he looks at the storms, Peter began to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. And Jesus pulled him back onto the water. Jesus is the foundation on which you can stand and you will not sink in the storms and tides of life. There are many storms hitting you. Jesus will be the sure foundation for you to stand when people say you are dying. When people say you are not making it, you are not going to stand. You are going to go back to your past. You are going to go back because Peter was sinking. Many of you are trying to be better. You are trying to live righteous. You are trying to please God. In your humanness, you are failing. Well, the secret, the answer to standing right with God is Jesus. On slippery grounds, Jesus is the solid rock on which you stand. Glory to God. That's what David said. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed within me, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that's what God is going to do for you. When my heart is overwhelmed within me, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that rock is Jesus. Glory to God.